Mercury, save me! Jupiter, stop and explain what's going on! This is great! They're like Tom and Jerry! And you don't even have to pay for a streaming subscription! Jupiter has gone mad! He wants to be my satellite! I'm too old and tired of being called a planet. I want to retire! I will become Earth's satellite! People will visit me like grandchildren! I can take the place of the Eighth Planet! <laughs> Hush! Don't bother them! I really want to find out how it will end! Uh, remember how much space bullying you've endured? <laughs> and the moon did nothing! But I will protect you from space objects! Oh, and can you protect me from one guy right now? Sure, just tell me his name. Jupiter! Yes, it's me. So will you tell me the name? <laughs> oh my universe! He has seen out dementia! <laughs> Jupiter, you've caused me to have a nervous breakdown! I'm oh. bursting with anger! Earth, it's not anger. You and Jupiter are getting closer to each other. And not him, but you are turning into a satellite. Jupiter's gravity is destroying you. Ah! Oh, am I going to take Earth's place? Does this mean that people will be mine? Ah. I can. I can take Earth's place. <laughs> Pluto, you're like an annoying advertisement on a pirate website. Jupiter, if Earth turns into your satellite, there will be no people at all. Your powerful gravity will immediately lead to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis! Hmm, the Mayan civilization predicted the end of the world. When was it supposed to happen? In 2012. Huh? I guess I'm a little late. Do you live according to the Mayan calendar? You're definitely a fossil! Earth, I would be more serious if I were you. Your speed is only one-tenth of the speed needed to stay in Jupiter's orbit! Ah. Earth, in less than a day, you'll crash into Jupiter! Ah. Will it crash? Well, no! I want peace and quiet during my retirement! Earth, you don't suit me! I'm leaving! I'm going to look for another planet and become its satellite! Mercury, thank you! You've deceived them so skillfully! Well, actually, I was telling the truth. And such a close approach of Jupiter might have already left irreversible marks on you. I advise you to consult a specialist. Hmm. <laughs> Is that it? No clashes, showdowns, and expulsions? Even Hannah Montana has more action. <laughs> oh, and it was such a great plan to overthrow a planet and take its place. But I should have chosen someone less powerful than Jupiter! Hmm! Oh, Mercury! Let's have a talk! Bang! Another hit on Jupiter. Hmm, let's see. Gas giant, the largest planet in the solar system, 318 times bigger than the Earth, two and a half times bigger than the rest of the planets in the solar system put together. One more interesting thing. If it got any bigger, it would actually become smaller. You see, with more mass, the planet would be denser. That would cause Jupiter to start pulling in on itself. Scientists say Jupiter could have four times greater mass, but still keep the same size. It takes 10 hours to make a full rotation on its axis. It's the fastest spinning planet in our solar system and gets hit by so many space objects all the time. This was discovered by amateur astronomers observing Jupiter and saw some unusual flash at the planet's surface. Impact events cause flashes like that, and for some reason, Jupiter gets more impacts than other planets. In 1994, astronomers discovered Shoemaker-Levy 9, a comet that broke apart and collided with the gas giant. The original comet was approximately the size of one that erased the dinosaurs. However, this asteroid fell apart into more than 20 fragments. They darkened the planet's surface, and it remained like that for months. Fifteen years later, in 2009, astronomers saw a black spot on Jupiter the size of Earth. It was the result of an asteroid around 650 to 1650 feet in length. The biggest asteroid recorded on Earth hit the area of Tunguska, Russia in 1908. 
This caused a massive explosion, even though no one ever found a crater. So, why is Jupiter the target for so many space objects? Asteroids and comets that pass by Earth and Jupiter go almost at the same speed. The number density of the space object that may interact is almost the same too. But the cross-section of what they might hit is very different. Jupiter has 11 times the diameter of our planet, which means it has around 125 times the cross-section. The more massive some planet is, the stronger its gravitational attraction. So, it will entice some space objects drifting by. Our gravitational field is weaker than Jupiter's. If some object passes near us moving at a speed of 22,300 miles per hour or less, our gravitation will attract it. Asteroids and comets usually move at bigger speeds. Jupiter attracts most of the comets and asteroids passing by. If our planet was hit by such big objects as frequently as Jupiter, we'd have extinction like with dinosaurs thousands of times more often. In 2020, scientists found there was an unusual asteroid in the orbit of Venus, the first one there. The size of a small mountain and rich in minerals we can find in Earth's deep rocks. They even think it could be a clue to a bigger set of asteroids created when our solar system was forming. That's not the only mystery around Venus. The planet has insanely violent winds that drive clouds and storms around the planet at speeds greater than 220 miles per hour. At 60 times faster than Venus itself rotates. Also, scientists are still not sure what happened with its oceans. They believe since the planet is so close to the sun, the water evaporated and went into the atmosphere as steam. It trapped heat coming from the sun, heat that would have vaporized more and more water over time. Venus probably had an environment like on Earth, but a very long time ago. The theory says many comets and asteroids were slamming into Venus. Billions of the planet's pieces were flying all around. Some may have even crashed into Earth's moon. Pieces that slammed into our planet are probably buried very deep, since we have greater geological activity than the moon. Uranus also had a collision, but a more serious one than asteroids. The rest of the planets in our solar system mostly have an axis of rotation that kind of points up from the elliptical plane. Uranus is tilted, lying on the side. So, a season there lasts 42 years, when either its south or the north pole is pointed at the sun. Most of the planets also rotate counterclockwise when you see them from above our solar system. Venus does the opposite, which means maybe it was kicked off axis a long time ago. Uranus may have collided with the other space body millions of years ago. When our solar system was still very young, the orbital configuration of Saturn and Jupiter may have crossed. Their gravitational forces kind of created orbital momentum and transferred it to Uranus. That knocked it off axis. Millions of asteroids orbit the Sun, and not so many pass by Earth from time to time. So we don't have some dangerous space bodies coming toward us. The plan is to visit Mars in the 2030s. And scientists hope Mars won't be a target of some bigger space bodies. New craters are formed on the red planet every one to two days. They can be 13 feet across, which means they could have been formed by objects that are the size of a soccer ball. Since the atmosphere there is thinner than ours, smaller bodies can enter easier. Most of the Martian north is smooth lowlands. The south is higher, full of craters, and the planet's interior has a surprising amount of rare metals. The theory says this is because a big celestial body collided with Mars and tore away a part of its northern half. Debris from that asteroid circled the planet and then mixed into two small moons that orbit Mars. We also have some Mars rocks on Earth, found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and some other places across the globe. Some of these rocks have gas that's chemically the same as the atmosphere on Mars. Rocks probably came due to a big explosion that happened when some larger asteroid or meteor that was ejected from Mars and landed on our planet. Mercury also has a thin atmosphere, so there are many smaller strikes there. Imagine waking up, going to your window, and see there are micrometeor showers every morning, which is something that happens on Mercury. This strange weather pattern shapes its atmosphere, called an exosphere. Mercury is so dense, its heavy iron core accounts for two-thirds of its total mass. Scientists think it could have been bigger in the past, but many collisions got the surface sort of scraped off. It's been constantly bombarded by rocks from space that left marks with craters. Planes on its surface seem to have been created because of volcanic lava spilling over the surface and then dried smooth. Many craters are filled with such a material, 
which means there's one more thing that rocked Mercury's world – volcanoes. There's an unusual group of asteroids discovered near Neptune. Wide range in sizes, from big metropolitan areas to tiny pebbles. They are thought to come from an asteroid group called the Kuiper Belt. It makes a ring well beyond Neptune. But these new asteroids have different colors than the Kuiper Belt. They're so far away from the Sun, their surface was supposed to stay almost pristine. But they have a similar color to those sun-baked asteroids around Jupiter. Like the rest of the planets, Neptune gets heat from the Sun. But there's something mysterious inside the planet that makes it generate more heat than it gets. This affects its weather, and Neptune has the weirdest weather in the whole solar system. Massive storms, insanely high winds, cirrus-like clouds that rapidly change all the time. There are dark spots in its atmosphere. They come and go. We receive a thousand times more sunlight than Neptune. Gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter can protect our planet from asteroids. Without them, the big impacts that created enough debris to form both moons and other planets would happen more often. There's a huge asteroid going around Saturn, which could be a potential flyby by 2031, more than 10 times bigger than the asteroid that erased the dinosaurs. Titan, one of the moons orbiting Saturn, 80% more massive than our moon, is actually the only moon in our solar system that has an atmosphere. It's one and a half times thicker than ours and consists mainly of nitrogen, like our atmosphere. No one knows where all that nitrogen came from. However, unlike Saturn and most of the other places in our solar system, its moon has a real potential to host life. Jupiter's gravity shattered a huge comet. It wasn't enough for the space monster. A real catastrophe happened. The shards didn't fly in different directions. They lined up and rushed towards Jupiter like the rail cars of a train. 21 fragments up to 1 mile in diameter burst through Jupiter's atmosphere. Fireballs at the speed of 37 miles per second bombarded the planet's shell. They heated the space around them to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's higher than the temperature in the sun's upper atmosphere and 312 times hotter than you need to boil an egg. Well, I'm not hungry anymore. The impact was like from a rock falling into a pond. The meteorite fragments formed giant plumes on the surface of Jupiter. Substances from its lower atmosphere rushed upwards. The process generated a tremendous amount of energy. Overheated streams of fire shot into the stratosphere. The monsters left behind them glowing plumes 1,900 miles long. That's greater than the distance between New York and Texas. Dark bruises appeared at the side of the blows. They were about the size of the Earth. Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 was the name of the violator of Jupiter's boundaries. The collision of celestial bodies happened in July 1994. It was a scientific sensation. For the first time in human history, a catastrophe of this magnitude was observed. The attack raised an important question for astronomers. Why is Jupiter unlucky? Space monsters attack it thousands of times more often than the Earth or any other planet in the solar system. All right, let's see. You decide to board a starship and travel to the mysterious Jupiter. A space probe would need two years to get there, but your starship is faster. You'll be there in… Great, the journey only took a second. Jupiter is actually big. It could fit 1,300 Earth-sized planets in it. It looks beautiful thanks to gas clouds. This planet has no solid surface, but there's a strange stain on its surface. It looks like a huge eye that can fit three and a half Earths. This storm will scare anyone. It's 10 times higher than Everest, and the wind rushes at a speed of 300 miles per hour. It's been going on for 350 years. You wouldn't hide from such a storm in a car, so it's good you're in a starship. If all the planets of the solar system merged into one super planet, the new object would still be two and a half times smaller than Jupiter. Large size also affects gravity. Spacecraft use Jupiter as a springboard to jump. The giant's gravity increases their flight speed and helps them reach their target faster. Gravity has turned the planet into a magnet for comets, asteroids, and dangerous space debris. Jupiter is a true space superhero. Its gravity shield takes a hit and deflects space monsters that fly into the inner solar system. The dinosaurs don't agree, but more on that a little bit later. What if Jupiter was swallowed up by a giant vacuum cleaner tomorrow? I can only say one thing, we'd have huge problems. Without a giant shield, thousands of comets and asteroids are attacking the planet much more often. Most of them burn up in the atmosphere or aren't large enough to affect us. 
But there are also larger comets and asteroids. After their collision with the Earth, you can say goodbye to all life on the planet. For example, in 2009, a celestial body crashed into Jupiter. It left a bruise the size of the Pacific Ocean. It's scary to think what traces it would leave on our planet. Most likely, the Earth would turn into a fireball. But recent research from astronomers suggests that Jupiter isn't such a nice guy. On the contrary, it's a bad guy with a slingshot that shoots comets at the Earth. A physicist used computer simulations. He found that Jupiter is equally likely to deflect and send comets toward the Earth. The giant attracts potentially dangerous objects and only partially protects us. It's already tried to knock out our planet many times. 66 million years ago, a cosmic body 10 miles in size crashed into the Earth. The energy of the impact set the surface of the planet on fire. It caused a huge earthquake and tsunami. A fiery rain fell from the sky on the Earth. There were millions of tons of debris and dust in the atmosphere. They stopped the sun's rays from reaching the planet. The nuclear winter began. This disaster led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Scientists have named this space criminal Chicxulub Impactor. Computer simulations of scientists at Harvard University showed where it came from. Chicxulub wasn't an asteroid, but a comet. This means that the core of its body wasn't stone and metal, but ice, dust, and frozen gas. It resembled a dirty snowball flying through space. The meteorite wasn't going to set fire to the Earth, but Jupiter intervened in the plan. It threw comets in our direction. In 1770, Lexell's comet appeared near the Earth. Our planet and this object were separated by only 1.4 million miles, close to nothing in space terms. Lexell's comet came closer to Earth than any other comet in human history. The object could have stopped life on Earth. The comet flew too close to Jupiter. The giant caught it and sent it in our direction. Now, this isn't a very good move for a superhero that protects the solar system. After three years, the comet went past us. It flew two times around the Sun and returned to Jupiter like a boomerang. This time, the giant pushed the comet out of the solar system. But let's not blame Jupiter. Scientists believe that without this gas giant, life on Earth would most likely never have happened. Jupiter sent meteorites toward Earth, which carried organic molecules and water with them. They were the building blocks from which earthly life began. Nobody knows if comets would come with a valuable cargo without Jupiter and its dangerous gravity. If you fly away from Earth to the center of the solar system, you'll see the Sun. Eight planets are flying around this star. There's a belt of more than one million asteroids between Mars and Jupiter. One theory says there was only the Sun at the very beginning of the solar system's existence. Clouds of stone and dust surrounded the star. These particles attracted each other and formed planets over millions of years. Jupiter didn't want any new neighbors. Its powerful gravity prevented rocks and dust from uniting into planets. They remained asteroids and gathered in a belt inside the solar system. If today all the asteroids merged into one planet, we'd get a cosmic body that would weigh only 4% of the mass of the Moon. Previously, the belt was densely populated, but Jupiter's gravity threw 99% of the asteroids to other places in space. Jupiter isn't the only one that plays a role in the development of life on Earth. Our main assistant is the Moon. It's the only natural satellite of the Earth. Jupiter has 79 satellites, and every year there are more and more of them. Jupiter is also surrounded by rings, but they aren't as beautiful as Saturn's and are practically invisible. The rings are composed of small black particles. This is the dust that the meteorites eject into space after colliding with the moons of Jupiter. The moon is responsible for the ebb and flow of the ocean. It regulates the life of bees, fish, birds, and amphibians. Even you feel the influence of the moon every day. Changing the brightness of the disk in the night sky regulates the level of melatonin in your brain. This hormone is responsible for circadian rhythms, which are important for healthy sleep. The moon came about thanks to another catastrophe, like many other things in space. Millions of years ago, the Earth looked like a ball of hot lava. There was no water or air. It was enveloped only in carbon dioxide and nitrogen. At this time, another planet the size of modern Mars crashed into the Earth. Scientists named it Theia. At a speed of 8,900 miles per hour, it collided with the Earth. The impact of incredible force threw millions of tons of material into space. The debris gathered into a ball that became known as the Moon. Scientists have almost solved the mystery of the Moon, but they don't know if there's a solid core in the middle of Jupiter or if it's dense hot soup that hangs in space. 
Jupiter has the largest ocean in the solar system. It's made of liquid hydrogen, not water. If Jupiter were 80 times more massive, it would turn into a bright star. Jupiter is a unique place that will never be home to humans. The pressure inside the planet is 2 million times greater than on the surface of the Earth. Extreme pressure and temperature would ruin any spacecraft that's gone too far. I guess that means Jupiter would have a crush on you. Hey, wake up! Quick, listen to that. It's a 5-second FM signal coming from one of Jupiter's moons. You fumble for your phone and inform your colleagues. They freak out over the news and rush to the lab. You've been a scientist working with the Juno probe, exploring Jupiter for years. But this is the first time you've witnessed something so unusual. Ganymede is Jupiter's largest moon and the biggest moon in our solar system. If this space body didn't orbit around Jupiter, it would be classified as a planet. It's even bigger than Mercury and Pluto. What makes this moon stand out among others is the fact that it has its own magnetic field. The moon was born around 4.5 billion years ago. It means it's as old as Jupiter itself. This planet-sized space body takes 7 Earth days to orbit its planet. Everyone gathers at the laboratory, impatiently waiting for you to play the recording of the signal coming from space. Your colleagues get their game on, trying to figure out what the source of this mysterious sound is. Around 40% of Ganymede's surface is dark, with craters scattered around. And 60% is light-colored. There are formations that were probably caused by tectonic activity or the release of water from under the surface. Scientists managed to discover a thin layer of oxygen trapped in the moon's atmosphere. The temperatures there are super low, between minus 170 to minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit. There isn't much information about how the moon behaves or what chemical elements it hides inside. Some of your colleagues try to create the same conditions that existed when the sound was transmitted. For hours, they sit there waiting, but nothing. Maybe it was a fluke. You get to the control system and activate the Juno spacecraft. The main point of this mission is to observe Jupiter's gravity, magnetic fields, the atmosphere, and the planet's evolution. By the way, there's also some evidence that Jupiter's largest moon is evolving too. Since it has a magnetic field surrounding it, auroras pop up all the time. Those are glowing gas circling the moon's north and south poles. If life existed in such a place, it would probably be at the bottom of Ganymede's extremely salty ocean. For a long time, scientists thought that the sun was a crucial component to kickstart life. But now we know that there are organisms dwelling deep at the bottom of the oceans. Those are doing just fine without sunlight. The oceans of our planet are teeming with some of the most bizarre creatures of all shapes and sizes. Sea lilies live some 10,000 feet underwater. They got their name because they look like flowers. Except they're not plants, but animals. Don't be fooled by their stems and leaves. Those are body parts equipped with nerve endings to detect food around them. Goblin sharks are probably some of the most weird-looking sharks that live at the bottom of the ocean. They can grow up to 12 feet long and have a very unusual snout. Now, take a look at the anglerfish. It has a bioluminescent blob on its head to attract prey and navigate its way around the dark ocean floor. It's a natural flashlight that never needs new batteries. It's only the females that have these flashlights, though. The blobfish is another bizarre animal living down there. It lives in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, 9,000 feet under the surface. Anyway, even though you asked everyone to keep the news confidential, it somehow leaks to the media and becomes a new trending topic. You get a call from a news agency. They say they want to interview you about this breakthrough that may prove life exists in outer space. The next day, you head down to the news station to talk about your discovery. You have a whole live studio audience watching your every move as you reach out to grab your glass of water. The crew scurries around doing some last-minute checkups before you're live on air. The makeup artist does some final brush-ups. The sound engineer asks you to test your mic once more. Several of the producers are sitting in the front seats. Bright lights are flooding the studio. The countdown begins. 3, 2, 1, and... You're introduced, and the host asks you to explain what it was that you heard. You tell them about the Juno space probe orbiting Jupiter. After a couple of questions, the host finally brings up the most dreaded one. Might the mysterious sound be coming from another civilization? 
Everyone leans in, waiting for you to answer. You freeze, not knowing what to say. Even though the crushing pressure at the bottom of the ocean is a thousand times stronger than at sea level, life still exists there. Algae, which is considered a delicacy in the ocean world, is off-menu for deep-sea creatures due to a lack of sunlight. Many of these bottom dwellers have to munch on leftovers instead. Those sink down there from the upper layers of the ocean. The freezing temperatures and the intense pressure have altered the cells of these creatures. This has made them more resilient than the average fish. Bacteria were developing their own ways of surviving. Studies show that they feed on certain gases and chemicals, like sulfur and carbon dioxide. Methane and hydrogen are released when tectonic plates move against each other. And some of these bacteria feast upon those gases too. Tardigrades, also known as water bears, are microscopic critters that can live and thrive in extreme conditions. You can find them in volcanoes, frozen glaciers, and even in the empty void of space. Which means that some life forms might actually exist on Ganymede. You explain this to your audience. Then you mention that you don't have enough information to determine if it was another civilization or a natural phenomenon that produced the sound. This doesn't mean that the bottom of Ganymede's freezing oceans isn't teeming with its own bizarre and weird creatures. There might be some legendary beasts like the Kraken or Leviathan there. Or weird glowing fish with two heads. A fish with tentacles and a large fin. Giant crabs. The bacteria there might be as varied as our own. The plants, if they exist there, have to be strong enough to survive the sub-zero temperatures. The animals on Jupiter's largest moon could be as big as our blue whales or as tiny as plankton. After the interview, you head back to the lab to examine the records once more. On your way home, you see posters of yourself with captions like, Are we not alone? Hey, you've become a celebrity! Many people take pictures of you. You've been booked by other agencies for more interviews. Some science magazines even want to put you on the front cover as the person of the year. Every time you come to work, you wait for the sound to appear again. But nothing. You send a signal from the Juno probe, trying to make some sort of contact with whatever produced the sound. Nothing. That night, you pass out on your desk once more. Eureka moment wakes you up in the middle of the night. There might be something you've missed. You run the numbers again and realize that the answer was in front of you this whole time. It wasn't another civilization that produced this sound. The source was electrons. Every planet produces its own sound. It's created when charged particles from the solar wind and the planet's magnetosphere interact with one another. That's what happened on Ganymede. The electrons in its magnetic field, where the probe picked up the signal, were acting stranger than usual and this amplified some irregular frequencies. You're embarrassed and spend the rest of your night making phone calls, telling your team the news. The agency that interviewed you releases a statement. They explain that other civilizations aren't trying to contact us. You sit back at your desk, waiting for the next big thing to happen. Europa is another of Jupiter's moons that may host life. It's made up of an iron core, a mantle, and a salty ocean twice the volume of all the oceans on Earth. And just like Ganymede, the ocean lies under a water ice crust. Scientists claim that there might even be active volcanoes there, and some resilient bacteria may live there. With enough water, certain chemicals, and a source of energy, Europa could produce life. But it's unlikely that we'll find anything but tiny microbes.